So if you start at a baseline or minimal brain activity, how do you intentionally build that up over time? Start with you, obviously. Cecilia. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, like I said before, in optimal mental functioning, you have to take a look at your thoughts. Your thoughts, I think, are the most important thing that you have to take a look at. Where are you with your thoughts? What are you saying to yourself? How are you saying it to yourself? When are you saying it to yourself? And I think it's really important that we take a look at this. And then also, thoughts engender emotions. And we have to look at that as well. So I think that's extremely important. I would say your thoughts. I would agree and expand upon it to, when it comes to your thoughts, it's really no different than working out. Um, anything that you're not very good at takes time and then all of a sudden you start getting better at it, you start to enjoy it and you become competent in it and the confidence grows. So look at this type of training the same way as you would look at exercising. If I have a client coming to me and they stink at push-ups and they hate push-ups, once they get going they get into that state, they become competent and just like I guarantee when you start on the backflips you thought they were the worst thing in the world and all of a sudden you became good enough now you're doing these I double dumps. I thought I was going to break my neck. <laughs> See? Fear. Fear will keep you out of flow, right? So it's really thought-based, and if you really start focusing, it's, it's a real simple thing. If you start catching your thoughts, and you catch yourself in these negative thoughts, and, and again, looking through an ego state, think again. You can think again about the same topic like that in an instant. It's not something that, man, I need to read 50 books on flow before I can become somebody who practices flow. It's literally in that exact moment, I'm thinking a particular uh, negative thought, I'm not feeling like I'm in a moment, I'm getting too focused on the outside version of myself. I get that way sometimes before I speak and then I get up there and it's all just the fear of the unknown and you step away from that and just say, wait a minute, get in the moment, be present right now, rethink again about it, I'm just going to have some fun with things. And the thing that has been my personal biggest pusher to, I feel like I've been in flow a lot more over these last few years, honestly has been comedy. Just not taking myself so seriously, studying stand-up. I get in the flow about 10 times more now than I study stand-up because I don't take life that serious or myself so serious, so it's uh, made a world of difference. Yeah, the reduction of the ego, again, is, is a huge aspect of that. And I told the story when I was giving my talk on Friday, but I'm sure a lot of you weren't there, so I'll tell it again because I think I learned the Olympic skier, uh, gold medalist, one of the best U.S. skiers in history. and. We were out hanging out one day, and, and I mentioned, uh, oh man, I got this stupid thong stuck in my head. And he looks at me and he just goes, well, get it out. And I go, dude, I just told you it was stuck. Like, that's the point, it's stuck. You know, I can't get it out. And he's like, yeah, you can. Like, who's in control of your mind? Just get it out. And I was like, oh man, this dude's really serious. So I like, okay. And just got the song out of my head. And it was a choice. And it's a choice that we think that we don't have. It's like, oh yeah, my mind's just doing its thing. There it goes. Well, you're in control of your mind. You know, you have the power to silence that. And so I guess that would be a challenge to all you guys because we all get that. We all get songs stuck in our head. Practice at that moment harnessing your power of choice and just getting that song out of your head. Because he went on to explain, I mean, his profession is sliding down a frozen mountain at 85 miles an hour with blades on his legs. Like, he has to be in flow, you know? So if he's up at the starting gate and he has some stupid song stuck in his head or he's thinking about something, he's gonna die, you know? So, so for him, mastering his mind was the key element. And anybody who knows Bodie Miller's story, his story is not about, you know, preparation and, and all of these things. I mean, I've been out with him until three in the morning the night before a race and watched him win it. But he masters his mind. Whereas other people would be like, man, I had drinks last night, I really don't know if I'm gonna perform. Uh-uh. He controls his mind better than any human I've ever met in my life, and that's his, that's his key to success, because he's harnessed that power of choice. There is no emotion that he's not in control of, there's no thought that he's not in control of. He has actually taken the controls of his brain and can use it however he wants. And that's his superpower, that's what allows him to be you know, the best athlete in the sport that he's able to be. But we all have that superpower, that's within us all. We just have to harness that power of choice.